everybody welcome back to the channel if you haven't liked and subscribed turn on the notification bell let's get right into the video <laughs> so after our best introduction ever today we're going to be talking about our top five microneedling tips and i have an incredible esthetician with us today lo hello everybody so why is lo here because lo did my microneedling yesterday during my lunch break and i'm still able to film today which just shows you what the downtime can be for some people so we're gonna be talking about the top five mistakes that you could be making that could potentially wreck your skin yeah for sure you want to keep your skin healthy you want to keep it prepped and you want to make sure you're going into this type of treatment prepared all right so five microneedling tips here we go here we go here we go <laughs> <laughs> So, little known fact, actually no known fact, no one knows this, but Lo also did my microneedling here. Loved it, great results. She gave me a lot of tips around this. I followed some of them, um, but they were all very good tips, and so we're gonna share those with you, and we're gonna build this out chronologically, from the pre-planning period to the peri-needling period to the post-procedure period. What is your first pre- or planning needling tip that you want to share? I think the biggest thing to think about before you even get on the books is what do you have plans coming up? Do you have any big events coming up? Any vacation? Are you facing like a lot of sun exposure in the near future? Maybe it's the summertime and you just simply want to go to the pool. You kind of have to plan around that a little bit. So Lo microneedled me yesterday and then she saw me sitting out on a picnic bench right after the procedure and she came up to me and she said, are you wearing sunscreen? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. So you do need to prep for being outside if you're gonna be outside. And this goes into the downtime as well. So if you have like a wedding tomorrow that you need mm -hmm. to go to, probably not the best time to get microneedling. Now I'm still a little bit pink, a little bit red today. And it's hard to maybe tell through the video, but I am a little bit swollen compared to my normal skin. The downtime for this procedure is about three to five days, mm -hmm. um, and depending on how well you react to it or how badly you react to something like this. But if you have something big coming up, I wouldn't do it that same week. Mm -hmm. Don't risk it. Yeah, don't risk it. Now, <laughs> with that being said, I think Dr. Shaw and I both got microneedling before shooting video the next day, so we're a little bit of risk they takers. Risk yeah, but we don't <laughs> advise that for you. It does have one of the shortest downtimes of any procedure, really. So you really, I, I tell a lot of patients, like come in on a Friday, and then you're probably good to go to work on Monday with very, pe very few people noticing a difference with your skin. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. All right, so what is your tip like the week of the procedure? You've already scheduled it. You know mm -hmm. that you don't have anything crazy coming up afterwards. Yeah. What are you telling people at least the week before they even come in? Usually anyone coming in for microneedling, they probably know a little bit about skincare. They might be on some tretinoin, some AHAs, BHAs, some active ingredients in their skin. So I'm going to tell them to discontinue that about three to five days before the procedure. I like to tell people to prepare their post-care things beforehand so they're not trying to rush out while they're healing. So just stopping your tretinoin three to five days before. Yeah, stop before. Okay. Grab your stuff. Easy. And you're good to go. So next, during the actual procedure, mm -hmm. what's the experience of getting microneedling done? Because a lot of people think a bunch of microneedles puncturing the skin, that's gonna be terrible. Yeah. So what happens in the actual procedure room? How do people prepare for this? What's the expectation for pain? What are your tips for that? The biggest thing to prepare is just set your expectations and kind of know what you're walking into. So usually you're gonna to want to anticipate honestly about an hour and 30 minutes because we're going to need to kind of screen you before, ask you a few boarding questions, make sure that it's completely safe, right? And then we're going to need to numb you for 30 minutes. After that, we can start the procedure and pain tolerance kind of varies per patient. Everybody's different, right? So actually Dr. Shaw gave me some microneedling and after the numbing, I personally felt nothing. I'm a bit of a toughie, have some tattoos, you know? No. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how you all felt with your pain, but I have had people on the forehead area maybe feel like it's a bit more sensitive, it's against the bone. But I've never had anyone tap out or feel like it was an overwhelmingly amount of pain. I would say to prepare for or possible discomfort, not necessarily major pain. I think it's a very important distinction there is like, it can be uncomfortable and I exactly. think it, for me, so I'm a huge baby. I'll just put that out there now. Uh, whenever I have a procedure, I get a little nervous, uh, but for me, even the pain was not nearly as bad as you might expect. If you've ever used a derma roller, you're probably tough enough to use in office microneedling, especially with a topical numbing. I'm emphasizing that too, it's topical. These are not shots and injections like yeah. you would numb for skin surgery. This is just a topical cream that you use 
you really do need to use it under guidance, but uh, it can be very helpful. So for me, it was just like a little buzzing. Maybe you could feel a little bit on the forehead more than in other places, but overall, I wouldn't say it's pain. And I was actually filming the entire time. And I think there are tons of things that hurt worse than this. So for sure. it's something yeah. that most people, unless you're very, very sensitive, is gonna be able to tolerate. For sure. All right, microneedling is done. We're leaving the office, or maybe we're not leaving the office. What's your tip for right after the procedure? So right after, hopefully you followed the first couple tips and you had your post care things together already. But you're gonna wanna make sure you have some gentle cleanser, gentle moisturizer, and also most importantly, your sunscreen, mineral sunscreen specifically. So mineral sunscreens afterwards, which I didn't do. I did after. <laughs> it was just like I immediately afterwards went outside and then the rest of the day, to be clear, I, I wore sunscreen for the rest of the day. Okay. And I'm wearing sunscreen right now, day after. Me outside for like just 10 minutes, I was super red. And even before I had gone outside, I was like almost not red at all for the procedure. Okay. So the sun plus a broken barrier is, is a terrible combination. So don't do what I did. Don't go outside right afterwards. Put on your mineral sunscreen before you even leave the building where you got it done. And if they don't offer you sunscreen, bring your own. Exactly, 100%. Our video cut out, so we might look a little bit different right now, but what are we doing once we're, we actually get home? What is your tip for that? So once you've gotten home, depending on what point in the day you received it, you might start that nighttime routine with your gentle skincare and wake up and follow that routine throughout about three to five days. You're going to be doing that, avoiding your BHAs, your AHAs, and any other topical medications. That's what you're not doing. You're not using a lot of your dedicated skincare ingredients. Certainly nothing potentially irritating. Mm -hmm. Trust me, once you've had this, your skin is, if you, you feel exposed. Yeah. Like without that skin barrier, you just feel exposed. Little things like the wind, a breeze, someone mm -hmm. whispering in your ear. You feel all of it. Yeah. So that's what you don't do. What do you do? Like what are some products and tips to help mend that skin barrier? What do you like people to use? One thing that I really like for when people feel really tight and really dry, I like to suggest using a CeraVe healing ointment. I know a lot of people also like to use Arnica, like topical cream to help with any like swelling and things like that as well. There's a couple of brands that have actually been studied post-procedurally. So specifically after lasers and microneedling, Vichy's Mineral 89, which is just like a very gentle, simplistic hyaluronic acid is something that you can use to help repair the skin barrier. And then also Elastin has their whole line of post-procedural skin nectars and things like that. Kind of on the pricier side, maybe not completely necessary, but would definitely it has been studied in this setting. Funny thing about that is when you were finished with me, you said, I think you offered up like the HA serum to wipe off the blood from my face. Mm -hmm. And then also the Elastin product that Dr. Shaw mentioned. I actually did use it post-procedurally. It was the Regenerating Skin Nectar. Um, I was like, oh, this has been studied post-operatively or post-procedurally, let me try it out. I loved it. I know it is expensive, you don't need it. But I like it. You can simply just use your moisturizer, CeraVe healing sure. ointment, but you want your fragrance free things. You want things that are not going to irritate the skin at all. And that's what you're going to do the night when you get home and then for a few days after that. All right, so that covers our five main tips. I think Lo has one more bonus tip. <laughs> yeah, I have just a little bonus tip because I think this affects a lot of people. When I bring this up, they kind of have like a shock factor. And another thing you have to remember is post procedure, you're going to want to avoid like any extremely hot showers, but also exercise. I know that. Dr. Maxfield, he likes to surf sometimes <laughs> after yeah. his microneedling session, but it is not <laughs> recommended to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think we're done here. Um, <laughs> that is all correct. You don't want to do anything pushing yourself exertional or sun related. Exactly. At least for that night, maybe the next night with mm -hmm. regular microneedling, you could probably exercise. You don't want to get into like a, like a hot tub or like a dirty pond with yeah, like a broken sure. skin barrier for sure. But there's some leniency I would say maybe in this one. Yeah, no? I will say like the day after I got microneedling, I went and I just helped move some chairs for an event. Mm. immediately my face lit on fire. Right. So you do want to be safe. Like these recommendations, like technically you don't have to follow them because you can make your own choices, but they're there for a reason too. So. All right, okay. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Right, see you next time.